Don't waste your time when filing your papers to submit for the USCIS and the Department of State, especially with your advisor opinion and your J-1 waiver. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone, good day from Central Florida, USA. My name is Emery and welcome to Powerful Couple Journey where we show you our random day-to-day -day lives here in the U.S. For today's video, please do not waste your time when filing for your advisory opinion and moving forward with your J-1 waiver. The reason for that is your advisory opinion through the Department of State is free. You don't have to pay anything for that. All you need to do is to go to their website, which I'm going to put on the link down below in the comment section as well. That way you're going to be looking for various steps on how to get that advice or opinion. Take note with the Department of State, they have the timeline. So based on the timeline that is posted on their online portal, you have to look at that one. It's probably two to four months before you get that advisory opinion. So how important is advisory opinion? It will really tell you if you are subject with a 212E rule or home residency requirement, most especially for J1 teachers that are from the Philippines, just like I used to have. Also, don't waste your time if you see that you had the chance to get rid of the 212E rule through exceptional hardship through your U.S. citizen spouse or U.S. citizen child. Based on my own experience, I was able to get my waiver through an exceptional hardship with my U.S. citizen husband. In order for you to have that, you have to do your own research. Research is the key for this one. At the same time, gather all evidences. If you are a J-1 teacher in your first year, you have to establish your relationship first, have your bank account statement, which is a joint bank account, if you may. Just put a little bit amount of money. That way, you are showing the USCIS officer and the Department of State officer that you really have that commitment to each other. Not only that, you could also put your finances or your bills together. If you have your rental place, if you have your phone bills, and if you have other expenses accumulated together. Make sure you have all of the forms from the USCIS. Study all of those. And I'm gonna put it here. And I'm also going to put it on the description. That way you can start researching. In the year 2021, when I filed, there are certain changes that they did this year 2024. While in fact, they also changed the fees this year for 2024. Do your own research. Don't waste your time. If you got married in your second year, do file your exceptional hardship waiver through your U.S. citizen spouse, whether you do it DIY or with an immigration lawyer. Take note, most of the things that you're going to do is still going to be on you. Your immigration lawyer is there to help you, guide you with everything. I'm not an immigration lawyer. I just did my papers through my own research. I did not waste my time. I really read all the finer details. That way I could submit my papers right on time, right on schedule, and based on the timeline that they posted with the USCIS and the Department of State. I created a J-1 Waiver Helping Hands group 
where we are giving ideas on how we do or did our J1 waiver. Most of them had it through exceptional hardship with their U.S. citizen spouse and U.S. citizen husband. Either way, they also have persecution waiver there. You can have your own immigration lawyer. That's very good because you'll be guided. But if you find it hard to really pay or having a difficulty to pay an immigration lawyer, you can do it through DIY and you can save a lot of money too. But the agony of waiting, that's just gonna be hurting you. So make sure that you know the timeline. It's important to read the bulletin that they have it's important to do your research and all the evidences should be gathered properly. So in order for us to have this done properly, make sure all the files are already filled with your information. This is a case-to-case -case basis. The reason for that is every case is unique. Mine might be different with yours or we have a little bit of similarities. However, it's really up to the immigration officer to determine if they find your situation having a hardship through your U.S. citizen spouse or your U.S. citizen child. We are talking here about exceptional hardship waiver because most likely that's where you're going to have to prove about the hardship from your U.S. citizen spouse. It's really important to start now. Don't waste your time if you wanted to get your waiver because right after your waiver, you can submit your application for your green card or that's form I-485. Some of us already submitted the form I-485 concurrent filing with form I-765 and form I-131. You're gonna see all of that here in the description. I'm gonna put it that way you will do your own research and read. You can print, you can scan, you can study it through your computer or through your phone. Sit down with your husband if you have a U.S. citizen spouse. That way they're gonna be educated as well that even though we are married to them it's not easy to become a j1 since we are subject to the 212e rule or home residency requirement again don't waste your time make sure you read properly and you know the timeline if you got married on your third year then make sure you already had your extension in your fourth year and then process all the papers that you have. It's really important to do that. That way you are not going to be cramming from your, with your files. And right after your extension with your J-1 visa, then you still have two years to buy time. Two years to do the processing. Then remember with your green card, it's also going to take some time, but as what they've said and based on other immigration lawyers, and this is not a guarantee though, if you are married to a U.S. citizen and you overstay your visa, they said that you're going to be forgiven for that. I'm not really sure. I'm not an immigration lawyer, but I'm just telling that some of them are saying that if you are married to a U.S. citizen, and you overstayed your visa, you'll be so forgiven. Just make sure that you read all the finer details, submit your statement of reason, and make sure that all of the documents needed and the evidences you have is unique and that with your evidences, you have proven that the U.S. citizen is going to have a hardship if you go back to the Philippines to fulfill the two-year home residency requirement. And that's it for our video today. I hope you're going to stay tuned for more videos here with Powerful Couple Journey with immigration, J-1 visas, our random day-to-day -day lives here in the U.S. Keep on learning 
keep on helping through our J1 Waiver Helping Hands group. And we also have a website where you could get some ideas and insights on how to start your J1 Waiver application. God bless everyone and tune in for more videos. Bye for now.